later today on Fox Sports 1. Florida Atlanta takes on number 23 Marshall. Thundering herd quarterback Rakeem Cato has thrown a touchdown pass in 39 straight games, breaking Russell Wilson's all-time NCAA record. It's been an amazing career for the senior, but it's even more impressive when you factor in where he came from. Bruce Feldman has the story. In Liberty City, Cato was bigger than Teddy Bridgewater, bigger than any quarterback. Cato was like a king because he always played quarterback. He was always the guy. To be the king of Liberty City can mean many things. The neighborhood is about six miles from downtown Miami, and its crime rate is more than three times the national average for violent offenses. But Liberty City is no different than Afghanistan. I mean, seven, eight people get killed a day. When people from West Virginia ask you about where you come from, how do you describe Liberty City? It's just a very rough place. I mean, you can see anything can happen anywhere, but you never know what you get yourself into down here. I like to try to stay, stay away from it as much as possible. What's the worst thing you saw when you were growing up as a kid here? A shootout. It was like 20 steps away from me. I had to get down court, and I was like, nah. Rakeem Cato's father was sentenced to 20 years in prison for armed robbery before the Marshall quarterback was even born. That was constantly on my mind, just, just why? That just stuck with me, like, um, why did he have to make that choice or, or, not, or not bear on me? That made his relationship with his mother, Juanisa Cato, even closer. The baby loved my mama, uh, provided for her kids by any means. Uh, whenever we needed, uh, she, she all, always was there. She, she was just a great, a great person to be around. They was very close, and he always loved my mom. He slept with her, you know, in the bed. I think until he was 12. In April of 2005, his mother suddenly became ill. She was taken to the hospital and passed away in her late 30s. The cause of death was pneumonia. It was just heartbreaking. I just knew that I had to grow up quick and, and try to stay on task. And every time I was working out, I was go extra harder, go even harder, uh, just, just so I can do the right things and try to provide for my family, hopefully one day. Cato was 13 and left without either parent. He split time living with his teenage sister and his grandparents, while the anger inside him about losing the person he was closest to mounted. Growing up and just not, not having your queen and king inside your house and, and not know what to do and not know uh, or where to get where to get your, your, next, your next meal from. So, I mean, it was just those things that were just constantly in, in my head, constantly in my head, like, uh, why don't I have my mom or why don't I have my father uh, here with me? Cato spent six months in counseling, but eventually, through football, he found a viable outlet for his edge. Very, very competitive, very feisty. Cato was like, uh, I would say, Floyd Mayweather, a <laughs> little skinny guy with a big mouth. His competitive fire almost got him kicked off his Miami Central High School team after an outburst during a game. The entire staff wanted him booted. Coach Luther Campbell, though, saved him and decided to take full responsibility for the troubled quarterback. Probably when he's thinking about his mom or something like that, he'll have a rough day and he would have an outburst. Knowing that, you would have a conversation with him and when you hear him talk, it would be like, all you other guys are kids. Y'all kids to me, I'm grown, I'm a grown man. Because he lived the life of a grown man. It was hard, it was hard. I mean, not, and you, can't, you can't run from it uh, because it's, it's there and, and you just have to deal with it. With Campbell keeping him on track, Cato led Miami Central to a state championship. But he was still a 150 pound quarterback with more than a share of emotional baggage. Recruiters were skeptical. But Doc Holliday, who had deep South Florida ties, was willing to take a shot on him. The people that judge the kid and don't know where he came from and what he's all about, you know, you, you just you get to know the kid and you love him. I mean, he's overcome an awful lot. Cato has had issues at Marshall, benched as a freshman for his outburst, but he has since emerged as a team leader and one of the best quarterbacks in the country. It was basically just, just by me growing up and just by me earning their trust and by them earning my trust. He's learned to control his emotions. The competitive part of him has not wavered, which we don't want that to happen. And I think he's just grown up and he's matured in a lot of areas. I think about it all the time when I'm up there, where I come from and how I grew up as a man, how I can see things way much better now and look at things different. Only one goal, one dream, man. Get better every time you touch the field. Let's go. 
team on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Kato's leadership has helped the Thundering Herd to an undefeated season. Up next, Bruce Feldman and Dave Wansett join me as we dive deeper into Kato's success at Marshall. Joined now by Bruce Feldman and the coach, Dave Wansett. Let's get back to Marshall and Rakeem Cato. Bruce, you were out there. You did that interview with him. What stands out the most about his character and his play? Rob, for me, you know, I've done a lot of features on, on college athletes over the last 15 years or so and seen some guys with really heartbreaking backgrounds. I haven't seen many who've had to overcome more than Rakeem Cato had to do in, in Liberty City. And when I had visited him down there in South Florida, one of the things we talked about was about his NFL prospects. Remember, this is a guy who came to college, he's about 150 pounds. He's not very big now, maybe he's 175. Uh, you know, so he wasn't sure, maybe he'll be an NFL player or not, but he said the most important thing to me is, very soon, I'm gonna be a college graduate. And that meant everything to my mother growing up, and I know how important that really is. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. What a, a great, great piece, great job by you, Bruce. I talked to Ron Turner today, and he's the head coach at FIU, and they played Marshall last week. And I said, tell me about this guy. You know, we're going to be talking about him. And he said, he says, he does got a little bit of Teddy Bridgewater in him. So you can see the similar things from the coach, yep, you know, having an influence yeah. on both of them. He said he's not a very big guy, but he's very accurate. And he says, from an athletic standpoint, he's got a very quick release and very quick feet. And when he does get pressure and he moves out of the pocket, He's got the ability to scramble for first downs, which we're seeing, but also, he says, more times than not, Ron said, the thing that you don't coach about this kid, he said, when he gets pressure and he moves out of the pocket, his eyes go downfield, and he makes a lot of plays down the field and, and keeps drives alive and obviously scores touchdowns. And they're, they're second in the nation in, score, in total offense. I mean, that's impressive. I just hope at the end of the year that... Just like last year with Jordan Lynch, the quarterback from Northern Illinois, I hope they recognize the body of work of what this young man's done, and I'd love to see him get invited to New York to the Heisman. Also be nice to see him invited to the Senior Bowl where he can maybe display his talents in front of yes. the NFL guys and some quote-unquote higher tier, more respected type guys from bigger programs. But the numbers that Cato puts up opens up a lot of eyes and may open up some draft pick opportunities for him as well.